Number 9. Lucas Dudley In 2020, a hunter was fatally shot in northern Minnesota after he was mistaken for a deer. The incident took place at around 7 p.m. and, according to the Beltrami County Sheriff's Office, 28-year-old Lucas Dudley wasn't wearing any high-visibility gear. Dudley was presumably trying to keep a low profile. He'd been released from jail about a month prior, and a court order prevented him from possessing a weapon, meaning that he was hunted illegally. He was at the Red Lake Reservation where Rain Stately, aged 33, was staking out deer. The dusky conditions and Dudley's lack of brightly colored clothing led to the tragic misidentification. Stately saw movement in the foliage and fired one round from his rifle. Dudley collapsed and died on the spot. Stately approached his target but after realizing what he'd done, called 911. It was reported that he fully cooperated with the authorities but it's unclear whether or not he was charged for the shooting. Number 8. Justin Lee Smith in November of 2020, a North Carolina teenager got impaled on his own rifle in a brutal hunting accident. 17-year-old Justin Lee Smith was hunting in the northwest part of Taisho Mingo County, Mississippi. He was in a ladder stand at a height of roughly 10 feet. Smith moved to one side of the platform, causing the balance to shift. He fell from the top and his chest got impaled on the barrel of his rifle. Smith managed to call the emergency services on his cell phone, but succumbed to his injuries soon after. Number 7. Jaden Provost In June of 2013, Jaden Provost set off on a hunting expedition in Australia's Northern Territory, armed with a crossbow he'd recently purchased. The 20-year-old heard some commotion in a bush and ran towards it with the crossbow pointing down. Suddenly, he found it difficult to move forward. When he looked down, Provost realized that he'd accidentally shot himself through the foot with the bolt tip protruding out the sole of his flip-flop. He hopped back to the homestead where he was working at the time, hit the crossbow, and tried to conceal the injury from his employer. Provost remembered that he hadn't spilled a drop of blood and, aside from intense throbbing, didn't feel much pain either. Understandably, it wasn't long before his employer noticed the arrow sticking out of his foot. He was taken to Catherine Hospital on an hour and a half drive. Upon arrival, Doctors, nurses, and paramedics all reportedly wanted to have their picture taken with this unusual injury. The arrow was removed, but due to nerve damage, Provost had trouble walking for a few weeks. Number 6. Michaela Alexis Rettinger On April the 28th of 2019, a young woman from Waterloo, Iowa, was fatally shot while driving her car through a wooded area on Highway 218. 25-year-old Michaela Alexis Rettinger was behind the wheel of a Jeep while her partner, Adam Kimball, was on the passenger side and another adult was in the back seat. At around 2.30 a.m., a bullet shattered the driver's window and struck Rettinger through the neck. It then hit 32-year-old Kimball in the face, becoming lodged in his tongue. The other passenger was unharmed. Rettinger succumbed to her gunshot wound while Kimball survived. He was treated at a local hospital and was unable to speak for a few days. The police determined that none of those present in the vehicle had been involved in any activities to suggest they'd been the victims of a targeted attack. The leading theory was that they'd been struck by a stray bullet from someone hunting in the area. An investigation was launched, but as of April 2021, two years since the unexplained incident, the shooter hadn't been found. Number 5. James Pace In August of 2013, Connecticut man James Pace accidentally shot himself in the shin while hunting a raccoon. The 81-year-old from New Haven was determined to kill the animal, which had been routinely scratching at his back door. Pace took his position in a chair armed with a 22 caliber rifle and waited for the raccoon to wander back onto his property. At one point, the elderly man sneezed, which caused him to fall from his chair and accidentally fire the weapon into his leg. Pace's son took him to Yale New Haven Hospital where he was treated for a gunshot wound that wasn't deemed life-threatening. Number 4. Rosemary Bilquist A day before Thanksgiving in 2017, a woman was killed while walking her dog after a neighbor mistook her for a deer. 43-year-old Rosemary Bilquist and her pet were out on a field in the town of Sherman, New York. Her neighbor, Thomas Jedlowski, was deer hunting well after sunset, which legally marked the closing of the hunting day. Jadlowski remembered being about 200 yards from what he thought was one of the animals he'd been tracking. He fired his pistol and struck Bilquist in the hip, after which he heard her cry out. 
Jadlowski got close to the woman and called the authorities upon realizing the grave confusion that had occurred. Police reported that he was in an emotional state when they interviewed him. Bill Chris was rushed to a local hospital where she was later pronounced dead. Her husband demanded accountability and Jadlowski was initially charged with second-degree manslaughter, which carried a maximum sentence of 15 years in prison. He eventually pled guilty to criminally negligent homicide and was sentenced to one to three years. Number three, Karl Rubischk. In 2013, Karl Rubischk and a friend were on a nighttime rabbit hunting trip near Brockton in Shropshire, England. Just like his father, who was a member of the British Falconers Club, 30-year-old Rubischk was an avid hunter. Unfortunately, while on the Friday night trip, he would suffer a fatal accident. As he was walking through a farm gate, Rubischk's weapon discharged and he was struck with a single round. His friend, who chose not to be identified, ran to a nearby house and asked the owner to call an ambulance. Paramedics arrived at the scene, but they were unable to save him. Rubischk's wife and mother to his two young children, whom he'd married less than a year prior, was reported as inconsolable in the incident's aftermath. Today's topic was requested by Cadillac DeVille, Just Hen McSween, Metro Vanners, and Grosser Slendy. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number two, Andrew Smith. On December the 2nd of 2020, Bradley Smith was hunting for a white-tailed deer outside of Delaware, Ohio, alongside his 28-year-old son, Andrew. They were with a group of experienced hunters, friends who had been meeting up at the spot for over two decades. According to Ohio's Department of Natural Resources Division of Wildlife, hunters are legally required to wear bright orange half an hour before sunrise and after sunset. Daylight turned to dusk and Andrew wasn't equipped with the necessary clothing. As he was moving through the forest, he was shot by his own father, who thought he'd spotted a deer. Andrew was pronounced dead at the scene. A spokesman for the sheriff's office told the media it's just the worst kind of tragedy, while the authorities said that Bradley wouldn't be charged for the shooting. Number 1. Chai Vang On November the 21st of 2004, Chai Vang shot and killed six hunters following a dispute on a hunting trip in northern Wisconsin. Vang, a naturalized Hmong American, originally from Laos, was a veteran of the California National Guard. That weekend, the 36-year-old had gone deer hunting along with two friends and their sons at a popular spot east of Birchwood. It's believed that they'd started their expedition on public land before moving into an area owned by Terry Willis. He'd been hunting alongside a party of 15 who were in a cabin on the private land. Willis found Vang in a deer stand and asked him to leave. He then radioed the cabin claiming he'd disposed of a tree rat and some of the others got in their terrain vehicles. They caught up with Vang further down the trail, intending to get the number of his hunting license and let him know that he wasn't welcome. When they arrived, Bob Croteau from Willis' group flipped over the tag on Vang's back to get his license. A verbal altercation ensued in which racial slurs were reportedly uttered towards Vang. It then turned explosively violent, but the circumstances are disputed. Vang claimed that Willis had shot at him first from about 100 feet away, which triggered his defensive response. However, no casing was recovered from Willis' gun. By his own admission, Vang had removed the scope from his rifle before releasing his first shot and then progressively gunning down the other hunters. Willis, the only armed person in his group, was struck in the lower neck as he dove for cover and was left paralyzed. Vang then aimed at the men on the ATVs, mowing down two of them. From close range, he fired three rounds at 48-year-old Lauren Hesseback. As he chased him around a UTV, he then went in pursuit of Bob Croteau and shot him dead, but not before he got the chance to radio the cabin for help. By the time two other hunters arrived on an ATV, Vang had also killed Croteau's 20-year-old son. The killer turned his orange jacket to its camouflage side and waited to ambush the others. Riding on the back of the arriving ATV was Willis' 27-year-old daughter, Jessica. Vang shot her in the back and the round pierced through her hip and into the driver's lower spine. Vang got near and executed both of them at close range. He then saw Hespec moving as he went to retrieve his scope. Vang approached him and reportedly said, You not dead yet? Hespec grabbed Willis' rifle with shots flying past him. He fired it once but missed unable to properly aim it due to his wounds. Vang then fled the scene after his weapon had run out of bullets. Only Hesbeck and Willis survived his onslaught. 
Following his arrest, Vang tried to claim self-defense in court, even stating that some of his victims deserved to die. He was sentenced to six life terms plus 70 years. Thanks for watching. Would you go on an all expense paid camping trip to any location of your choosing, provided you had to hunt and gather all the food you ate? Let us know in the comments section below.